Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison looking at Cybertruck, particularly the all-wheel drive or dual motor Cybertruck and comparing it to some other alternatives. The primary vehicle I want to compare it to is the Model X, Model X long range, but I also want to look at the Ford F-150 gas vehicle, the Model Y briefly, and the Ford F-150 Lightning briefly. And I'm not going to bother talking about the Rivian R1T because it's the, the bed is just not comparable. I think the R1T really isn't a comparable view. I love the Rivian, uh, and it's there, there's a whole bunch of details about the specs of the Rivian R1T that it's just not really a viable, comparable vehicle. I think the, the important comparisons are the Model X, long range Model X, which is the same price, and then the regular F 150 gas slash diesel vehicle, uh, because that's the, the high volume vehicle that it compares with where the F-150 Lightning just isn't made in volume and the Rivian R1T is not really a direct competitor and will probably never be made in the volume that Cybertruck will be made in. So a couple details, the, the Cybertruck uh, all-wheel drive is 340 miles of range, will tow 11,000 pounds, zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds, which is pretty fast. Top speed is only 112 miles an hour. Now, uh, you know, I don't know how often people are gonna go faster than that. I can see like Texas highways where the speed limit is like 85 miles an hour, 112 might be a little low for a top speed. <clears throat> Definitely people driving pretty fast on Texas highways, but I would say most of America, most of the time, 112 miles an hour is gonna be plenty. I've been driving a Model X Plaid a lot. I may have occasionally driven faster than 112 miles an hour. I'm not admitting I drove 144 miles an hour, but I'm not denying it either. Um, dimensions, 6,600 pound curb weight, 120 cubic feet of cargo space. Um, that's, I believe the, the, the bed, I'm not sure what that exactly relates to. And we're not going to get a complete comparison of everything. You know, displays aren't really easy to compare. I think another key detail is the overall width is 95 inches. That's going to map out to about the same as the Ford F-150, which is one of their goals. The overall height is only 70 and a half inches. This is a detail a lot of people missed. When they first announced Cybertruck, it was going to be 75 inches tall. By lowering the height to 70.5 inches, you lower the frontal surface area. And that makes it, in addition to having a really good coefficient of drag, it means you have less aerodynamic drag, so you're going to get better range on highway speeds. So that's really important. Overall length, 223 inches. You're going to see how that plays out uh, relative to the Ford F-150. Um, charging speed, we might talk about that, up to 136 miles added in 15 minutes. It was a critical detail, and I want to thank Rob Maurer. Rob, I saw this in Rob Maurer's video, and I just want to point it out. Cybertruck's all-wheel drive consumption rating, 42.9 kilowatt hours for 100 miles. I think if you do this math, I think it means that Cybertruck has a battery pack of about 145 kilowatt hours. So this is not great. I was hoping for 33 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or close to 33 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. That would be the equivalent of three miles a kilowatt hour. My Model X Plaid gets 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. The Model uh, X Long Range gets about 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. I was maybe unreasonably optimistic that they would get close to three miles a kilowatt hour. And this is worse than two and a half miles a kilowatt hour. 40 kilowatt hours per 100 miles would be two and a half miles a kilowatt hour. So they're not killing it. And there's um, there's a range extender. I'm not going to go into detail on the range extender, but if you apply this, it means the range extender is about a 56 kilowatt hour pack, which means it probably weighs somewhere in the ballpark of 600 pounds. So one of the things people have been talking about the range extender is you can put it in when you need it and take it out when you don't. And I don't think it's going to be removable. You're not going to be pulling a 600 pound object out of your vehicle, it's probably installed by the dealership or installed by the factory and you're not going to be able to take it out. It's not something you take it. You decide, do I want this thing permanently? And most people will decide no. The, the need for having that, that level of range is going to be a rel relatively small number of vehicles. Just a quick point on that. If you drive 25,000 miles a year and you drive 250 days a year, you're driving 100 miles a day on average. So if you've got 340 miles of range on the dual motor Cybertruck, then 100 miles of range, you know, you're going to go 100 miles. You're, you're very rarely going to go more than 200 miles. You know, there will be days when you're going more than 200 miles, but you're averaging 100 miles a day. So 340 miles of range is plenty. Even if you're towing 100 miles a day, which is going to be unusual, 
if you knock the range down 340 to 170 for half and maybe knock a little more up and say you're getting 140 miles of range, you're probably going to have enough on your on a daily basis with that. So just make sure you have a good charging setup at home and you can charge at night and you'll be back to full when you need it. So this shouldn't be an issue. I wanted to compare this to Model X. So Model X is 348 miles of range. That's almost identical. To, to be clear, the Model X long range is the same exact price as the Cybertruck dual motor all-wheel drive. The acceleration is close. The Model X long range is 3.8 seconds, 0 to 60. The Cybertruck all-wheel drive dual motor is um, 4.1 seconds. So that's almost indistinguishable. Top speed, Model X clearly has the advantage there. We don't, I think I saw the drag coefficient for Cybertruck was like 0.33, not really a particular issue. Weight, 5,148 pounds versus 6,600 pounds. So the truck is 1,500 pounds heavier. That's an impact on range. Um, the drag coefficient is an impact on range. The frontal surface area is an impact on range. All these things add up. Towing capacity on a Model X, 5,000 pounds versus 11,000 pounds on the Cybertruck. Both dual motor powertrain, both supercharging up to 250 kilowatts. Model X seats up to seven people. Mine seats six. The Plaid seats six. Uh, the Cybertruck seats five. I just think a lot of people who are thinking about Model X, and to be clear, Model X is a low volume vehicle. Cybertruck is heading for much higher volume, but I just think this is a useful comparison. This is, to me, probably the most useful comparison because if you like Teslas, this is your alternative Tesla. Um, $80,000 and you get a vehicle that frankly is just a lot more useful than a Model X. Uh, Model X is great if you're driving people around all day long, if you've got three kids and you want to take them somewhere, probably the Model X is a better vehicle. You've got, you know, five people in the vehicle. Yeah, you can seat five in the Cybertruck, but you know, you're going to want more space for things. I, I, I think probably even up to five people though, you're probably, this is a gut one. I'm like, I'm not really sure where I'm going with that. Cybertruck might be good enough if you got five people. Typically, it's only if you're going to six people that it becomes an issue. And yeah, I, I don't know where to go with that. And I, I would say, by the way, there was some video showing crash testing. It looks like Cybertruck is amazing in crash tests, like the best vehicle you've ever seen in a crash test. So, you know, a lot of advantages. If you're thinking about buying a Model X, are you still buying a Model X or are you buying a Cybertruck if you can? I think a lot of people are buying a Cybertruck if they can. Um, just a little details here. Uh, Model X is a lot shorter. I think we're talking about 30 inches difference in length, so two and a half feet longer. The width, 89.4 inches versus 95 inches. So Cybertruck's wider. It's not that much wider. Overall height, 66.1 um, inches versus 70 inches. Surprisingly, the Cybertruck is not that much taller than the Model X. I'm not getting into wheelbase. Ground clearance, though, the highest you can get on the Model X is 8.1 inches. I think the Cybertruck goes to 17 inches of ground clearance. It has a lot more travel. The air suspension on the Cybertruck is much more capable. Volume, the cubic feet of Cybertruck, the biggest number they've got is 91.6. Cybertruck is 120. A lot more storage in Cybertruck. Not clear whether um, the Cybertruck 120 cubic feet refers to everything or if that's just the, the, the trunk bed, the, the bed. I'm not clear on that. Just really quick, I wanted to look at Model Y. Now, Model Y is much less expensive. You're talking about basically a $50,000 vehicle versus an $80,000 vehicle. Both get $7,500 tax credits, so there's no advantage there. The Model Y is a much lighter vehicle, 4,300 pounds versus 6,600 pounds, so it's 2,200, 2,300 pounds lighter. Cargo volume is a lot less. Top speed's better. Range, comparable, about the same range. The long-range Model Y is slower than Cybertruck. Cybertruck is significantly faster acceleration than the long-range Model Y. You can go to Performance Model Y, you get different numbers, but then the range drops on the Performance Model Y to like 305. Um, seating up to seven, so, you know. But the, the third row on the Model Y is a joke. That's only for like tiny kids. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to look at the comparison. I don't think because they're $30,000 apart, I don't know how many Model Y buyers would say, you know what, I think I want to get a, a Cybertruck instead. Cybertruck's a choice. You know, you're, it's much larger. It's going to be a tighter fit in your garage if it's going to fit at all. And, you know, it's a lot more money. But I, I think Cybertruck looks pretty amazing. There's a lot of advantages. You know, you never have to worry about the paint. The next vehicle I want to look at is the Ford F-150. I'm not looking at the F-150 Lightning yet. I'm looking at the gasoline or diesel versions of the F-150. And you want to look at the Super Crew. The Super Crew is the most comparable because it has full rear doors just like Cybertruck. It has, you know, the same similar rear leg room, similar space in the rear. 
the overall length 243 inches so the the comparable f-150 is actually 10 inches longer and this is with the six and a half foot bed cybertruck has a six foot four bed so it's a little shorter bed but i don't think the five foot five the five and a half foot bed is really a comparison so i think you got to go to the six and a half foot bed to make a, a close comparison width including mirrors 95.7 inches it's about the same width height 77.6 inches it's much taller the the f-150 is seven and a half inches taller seven inches taller than cybertruck and then ground clearance 8.8 .8 inches so cybertruck crushes the f-150 on ground clearance you know even this other one in the middle there is 9.4 inches cybertruck goes to 17 inches of ground clearance so huge advantage there for cybertruck curb weight uh you know the f-150 has a huge advantage here the curb weights are around 5,000 to 5,500 pounds if you go to the hybrid it's 5,500 pounds but I would say, you know, roughly leave the hybrid out of it. You're talking about 5,000 pounds versus 6,600 pounds. So when Elon announced Cybertruck, he was saying they were shooting for the same dimensions, including weight. And they very clearly did not succeed in matching F-150 in weight. I made videos. I predicted that Tesla would come close to that weight or do better than 5,000 pounds. And I was clearly wrong. I admit when I'm wrong, I got that one wrong. Elon got it wrong. I got it wrong. So, okay. So there's an advantage for F-150 is it's just a lighter vehicle. I don't know how much of an advantage that is for towing. It's actually not an advantage necessarily, but there you go. And I'm, I'm talking about F-150, not F-350. Now, when you're looking at payload, um, a lot of variants of the F-150 do not have the comparable 2,500 pound payload, but there's a V8 version here with a 2,650 pound payload. Notice the two stars. And there's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost with, tw with a 2,600 pound payload. Again. The two stars mean basically it requires a heavy duty package and you're going to see some towing options where they require these heavy duty packages that are extra cost that when i look at pricing you're going to see I, on towing um again with the six and a half foot box and the four by four you want you want all-wheel drive because the the cyber truck is all-wheel drive so a lot of the variants do not have 1100 pounds towing capacity you have to get down here to the five liter v8 and i'm going to show a second page of this but again you can see these stars the single star, two stars means you need these heavy duty packages. There's the second page of that. And you can see a lot of these require, I mean, there's one here that EcoBoost, one of the variants doesn't have the requirement. You can see below at the bottom, max trailer tow package and heavy duty payload package are requirements in order to achieve some of the things that they're talking about here. But you can see there are F-150 versions that will tow more than Cybertruck. And there's a lot of F-150 versions that will tow less than Cybertruck. But, you know, my gut is 11,000 pounds is pretty good. Probably the the Cybertruck can actually tow more than it's rated for, and the F-150 can probably tow more than it's rated for. It's a it's a fairly small number of buyers who are going to care about being able to tow more than 11,000 pounds, but just to see the comparison. Now, fuel economy, Tesla compares to a vehicle getting 20 miles a gallon when they're comparing the efficiency. But actually, like the high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 is averaging 16 or 15 miles a gallon, the regular EcoBoost 3, uh, V6 is 20 or 19 miles a gallon, depending on whether you're using auto stop and start, which is an annoying feature if you ask me. And the 5 liter V8 is 19 and 18 miles per gallon. So Cybertruck is actually pretty competitive uh, on efficiency. The, the, the difference in efficiency between Cybertruck and F-150, gas, gas F-150, is pretty dramatic in terms of how much money you're going to save on electricity and, and tesla priced this at like 16 cents a kilowatt hour i was paying 15 cents a kilowatt hour in florida if for commercial users and for some users you're going to be able to get a package uh on your utility where charging at night is a lower price point because there's less demand at night so the the, the utility charge is less for electricity at night um that's a, it's called peak load pricing there's a whole reason for that but you may be able to charge your vehicle at like three or four or five cents a kilowatt hour instead of 15 cents a kilowatt hour and then the energy savings, the, the amount you save on not on D versus diesel fuel or gasoline is amazing. It's a huge, huge advantage for Cybertruck. It's one of the biggest reasons I think you're going to see a lot of commercial users buying Cybertruck is they're just going to do the math. And they're going to say, look how much money we're saving on an annual basis on this vehicle. Yeah, all right, maybe it costs a little bit more than an F-150. It doesn't actually cost that much more when you add in the packages you might want on the F-150. But, you know, you're saving thousand two thousand dollars a year if not more on fuel versus electricity um, huge difference there and then i just wanted to touch on the f-150 lightning which i don't think is really comparable it doesn't have the same payload it sort of has the towing capacity and doesn't the, the estimated range if you add in the the extended range battery um 
then you, you're, but you can see that's seventy thousand dollars right here, and it doesn't have everything Cybertruck has. You know, it doesn't have FSD, it doesn't have the same software, it doesn't have the supercharger network. They'll eventually get uh, access to the supercharger network, but it won't be the same. The software is not the same. In pricing summary, I priced it with the optional battery, and I got to eighty-one thousand dollars. So it's the same basic price. Uh, I didn't. I don't remember exactly what boxes I ticked off, but I got to an eighty-one thousand. This one doesn't qualify for the seventy-five hundred dollar tax credit. Right. You, if you, I think if you add the features that allow the heavy duty towing, um, I forget which options I added. I added a couple options and, and that basically made it, you know, you, you want to get it to $79,000. So you get the tax credit. Now, maybe you can negotiate it to $79,000 at the dealership. I don't know. I'm not sure four dealerships are cutting people breaks on that. So I, you know, I, I think this is an important to think about, like how does Cybertruck compare to other vehicles? And I think it's, Pretty straightforward that Cybertruck looks, you know, when this question, well, well, they didn't match the numbers that they put up in 2019 when they announced Cybertruck. Well, the F-150 Lightning was supposed to have a low, uh, base price of 39000 and It actually has a base price of 49000 So, and they started, there's a two-year gap. So Tesla had two more years of inflation going there. Um, I think the practical reality is $79,000 for a dual motor Cybertruck. You can see it's competitive with the Model X. You can see it's competitive with an F-150. I personally think that Cybertrucks, if you're going to buy a, a vehicle of that type, it's the best vehicle you can buy. Now, we haven't seen independent tests, road tests, whatever. We haven't really seen the, the MKBHDs and other YouTubers saying, hey, I got my first drive. Here's my thoughts. I think all those videos are coming soon, and that'll give us some, some insight into it. But fundamentally, what Tesla has done is they've made a truck that has a lot of capabilities that a lot of other vehicles don't have. Um, you know, you've got vehicle to the house to, so you can back up your house. I, I think very few people will actually use that feature, but lots of people think it's really important. So, okay, it's got it. Got the 240 volt outlet and 420 volt outlets in the vehicle. Um, it's stainless steel, it's bulletproof. The glass is tougher. Uh, so many cool features. There was that base, there's all the uh, accessories that I thought were pretty cool that, you know, like the base camp tent, uh, you know, is it overpriced? Yeah. Are the wraps overpriced? Yeah. Um, the wraps aren't really available except for a couple places in California right now. But there's a lot of features that you can add to this. You can see how people are going to customize this. They're going to make a lot out of it. And of course, fundamentally, it's like, this is the coolest thing on the road. If you want to buy a cool vehicle, this is the coolest vehicle you can buy. Now, some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to love it. But as Saxon Musk says, the future should look like the future. This looks like the future. It sure as hell doesn't look like the past. So I'm really excited about Cybertruck. Again, I don't think this is critical. You know, I'm a Tesla is the next Tesla guy, t-shirts at elonbits.com. I don't think that Cybertruck is critical to the long-term future of Tesla in terms of the company's, you know, goal of reaching 20 million vehicles, of, uh, you know, accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. I think the future of Tesla as a shareholder is the next generation vehicle. It's FSD, it's RoboTaxi, and it's bot. Maybe it's AI training, you know, AI with, with the Project Dojo. I think there's a Tesla Energy with Megapack. I think all these things are actually far more significant. But if you look at Cybertruck and you say, all right, I think they can, by 2030, they'll be doing half a million a year. If the average selling price is $80,000, that's $40 billion in revenue, which is roughly half of, of 2022 revenue. But, you know, 2030 revenue is going to be so high, that's going to be relatively trivial. Now, maybe you get to a million a year and you got $75,000 average selling price. Well, now you got $75 billion. It's still just not that big of a deal if you think Tesla's heading to, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue, maybe a trillion dollars in revenue. It's not, doesn't suck. It's not bad. It's, you know, everything adds up and helps, but I don't know how big of a deal it is. And I do see um, the prospect for Tesla to sell, say, $500,000 a year in America. Maybe more. I mean, you know, F-150 has peaked at over a million a year. So if it just crushes the competition, you could see it going to a million a year. But without having that lower price point, I'm not sure how much demand there is. Are they going to be able to manufacture it better in the future? Will there be a new version that lowers prices? Will the batteries become less expensive and allows them to lower price? We'll see when they manufacture at scale how low they're able to bring the price down. I kind of wonder... If Cybertruck weighs 6,600 pounds and Model X weighs 5,100 pounds, fundamentally, that Cybertruck should cost more than Model X. Um, now, you don't have to paint the, the Cybertruck, and it doesn't have the Falcon Wing doors, and that adds cost. The 
4680 cells produced by Tesla probably cost Tesla less than the than the 1865 cells that are produced by Panasonic. So there there are some cost advantages. The wiring, the 48 volt wiring uses 70 70% less wire. And it'll be manufactured at larger scale than Model X. And that gives you some benefits. But I still wonder, you know, you're going from 5,100 pounds to 6,600 pounds. I think the cost of goods sold for Cybertruck is probably higher than Model X. You also have the castings, right, front and rear castings and other, you know, manufacturing advantages. I wonder if they're able to bring the price, the, the cost of manufacturing Cybertruck to be significantly lower than the Model X. Because if they can't bring it significantly lower than the Model X, then I don't know how much they can lower the price of Cybertruck in the future. So that's that's an issue to consider. So, you know, I can see half a million, 750,000, maybe a million a year in the U.S., the U.S. and Canada and Mexico. They are already selling um, the order. Op, the order option is up for Mexico. The only place you can order a Cybertruck right now are U.S., Canada, and Mexico. The rest of the world just has, you know, send me updates, uh, a button to request updates. I do think that um, when we're looking at other markets for Cybertruck, Thailand, surprisingly, I learned this recently, Thailand is the second largest market in the world for pickups. Bigger than Canada, bigger than Australia. And there's been talk about Tesla building a factory in Thailand. Well, what if the factory in Thailand was going to build Cybertruck? What if they're going to build a factory in Thailand that will build cyber trucks and next generation vehicles? It's pretty interesting. The Southeast Asian market combined, when you had Thailand and Malaysia and Indonesia and Vietnam and you know Australia, Philippines, whatever, when you add all those countries together, it's apparently the third largest car market in the world. If you treat it as one market, you say you've got North America, you've got Europe, you've got China, it's, it's, a, it's a large market. It's bigger than Japan, it's bigger than India. So I think in a lot of ways it might make sense for Tesla to build a factory in Thailand. The Thai, the Thai prime minister's, you know, talking it up. So, you know, if they built a cyber truck factory in Thailand, they might be able to sell 250,000 vehicles a year between Thailand between Thailand and Australia and Malaysia. I saw a lot of pickup trucks in Malaysia. I think Indonesia may have a significant market for pickup trucks. I was surprised by how many pickup trucks I saw in Malaysia to be honest. So I think when you put all that together, maybe there's potential for Tesla to sell a significant volume of cyber trucks in those countries and have a factory in Thailand to build them. And it's an important detail that it's steer by wire, which I think makes it a lot easier for Tesla to move the steering wheel to the other side, Thailand and Malaysia and Indonesia. I think, I think most of the countries in Southeast Asia drive on the left side of the road. Australia drives on the left side of the road. So it could make sense for Tesla to make left-hand you know, um, vehicles so the steering wheel on the opposite side in Thailand and make vehicles. I, I think the factory could switch up pretty easily in the U.S., but, you know, it, it might make sense to do that if you if you find that the demand is there. Now, can the Southeast Asian market a court afford a $60,000 pickup? I don't know about that. I don't know how much money there is in those countries to be able to afford that. Australia can afford it. I'm not sure how much Thailand can afford uh, pickups that are that expensive. Now, maybe building it in Thailand would lower the cost. That's an interesting question. If they if they go ahead and build it in Thailand, maybe they're able to get the cost down um, and combine that with building the next generation vehicle. And maybe that makes sense. Because, you know, if your target is 200,000 vehicles a year and you're selling them in Australia, all across Southeast Asia, maybe there is enough of a market for that. We'll see. So please let me know what you think. Let me know with your comments. Please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Please support me on Patreon on the Locals platform as a subscriber on the X platform or as a YouTube channel member. And thank you so much for watching.